Hello, welcome to the workout. Today we're going to be looking at a series of uh, movements specifically for the beginner. We've got a combination of hip movements, upper body movements and arm and hand movements. First we're going to begin with um, the posture. You're going to have your feet are going to be facing forward, your knees are going to be bent and your bum is going to be tucked in with your tummy engaged. This is a general posture that you're going to keep throughout most of the movements. When you have this posture engaged you can also make sure that your chest is lifted. Your shoulders are going to be relaxed and make sure that your, um, that your head is kept back. The first movement we're going to do is the hip lift. You're going to straighten your knees and you're going to take all your weight over to one side. All your weight is going to be on the one side. This foot is going to be lifted as if you're wearing high heels. You're going to take your one arm up, place it here, your shoulder is relaxed and your hand is poised. This arm is down and it's framing your opposite hip. The way that you get your hip to move is you're going to move your knee by keeping your foot raised. So you're going to take your knee and you're going to straighten. Lower and straighten. Make sure that your knee, that your foot remains lifted. You're going to straighten your knee and lower it. Straighten and lower it. Once you've got the hang of the movement, you're going to add in your glute. You're going to tighten your glute to create a flicking motion. So you're going to flick, flick, flick. And you create that by tightening your glute. And this is called the hip lift. We're going to try it on the other side. You're going to flatten your foot, swap your weight over to this side. Your arm is going to be lifted. This arm is going to be framing your opposite hip. Make sure that you raise your foot as if you're wearing high heels. And the same thing with your knee. You're going to straighten your knee and lower it. Straighten, lower, straighten, lower. Once you've got the hang of the movement, you're going to add in the glute. You're going to tighten release. Tighten, release, which creates a flicking motion. Now we're going to take that same movement and we're going to add a turn to it. So we're going to begin on this side. You raise your arm, lower the side to frame your hip, place all your weight on the one side, lift your foot, and you're going to take your foot and place it slightly in front of you, almost at what would be two o'clock. You're going to take your foot and you're going to turn it as if you were putting out a cigarette or squashing a bug, you're going to turn and lift your hip. Take your weight back onto this side, move your foot, turn and change. Turn, change, turn, change, turn, change. We're going to do it on the other side. You're going to take this arm down, place this one up. Change your weight over, place your foot at what would be two o'clock and you're going to do the same thing. Turn your foot out as if you were putting out a cigarette or squashing a bug. You're going to turn and change. Turn, change. Turn, change. Turn, change. And bring it all the way around to the front. The next movement we're going to do is the hip circle. There are several different types of hip circles. The first hip circle that we're going to start with for beginners is one that is made with your waist. You're going to go back to your basic posture. Your feet are going to be facing forward. Your knees are going to be bent and your bum is going to be engaged. You can imagine that there is a small hula hoop around your hips, approximately this distance from your hips. And you're going to be marking four points on the hula hoop, the front, the side, the back and the sides. So you're going to lift your hip front, take it to the side, Take it to the back, side, front, side, back, side. And then once you've got the hang of that, you're going to smooth out the movement. So you're going to smooth it around, making a circle. Notice that your legs are holding you and that your waist is making the movement. If you place your hands on your torso, you're going to feel that the movement is actually coming from your waist. It's a very controlled movement. It's a very tight movement. And it's one that will give you a very good workout. Once you've got the hang of that movement, you can do two things. One is you can speed it up. You'll need very good torso control to be able to do that. You can make it a lot quicker. And you can also lower it. So we're going to take that same movement and you're going to lower it slightly with your knees and lift it. Okay, this is also why the movement needs to be made with your waist because now you're going to be using your legs to be doing, doing something else. So get the circle going, keep it nice and slow and we're going to lower it. So take it down and bring it up. Usually two is a good count, so you're going to take it down for one, two, bring it up, one, two, and again, one, 
to and bring it up. The next movement we're going to do is the hip twist. Your knees are going to be locked, your feet are going to be hip distance apart, your arms are going to be out to the side and you're going to be taking your hips and moving them forward and backwards. So forward, back, forward, back, forward and back. You're going to speed up the movement. Imagine that you have a towel and that you're drying your bum with a towel and make sure that your knees are locked. Keep your arms out at the side. They're going to assist you to make the movement. When you've got the hang of the movement, you can soften your knees to prevent any injuries. You're going to soften them slightly and continue with the movement. And once you've got that perfected, what we're going to do is take it into a, a walking position. So you're going to take that same movement and you're going to be able to take it onto one leg so that you can lift this foot and just balance with your toes and then you're going to swap and do it on the other side and make sure that you're keeping this movement going, taking it forward and back and forward and back and forward and back and alternate it between sides making sure that you can do that with your weight all on one side and no weight on this other foot. Then we're going to try and take it forward. So you're going to place your foot here and you're going to take the twist forward and take it back. Take it forward and take it back. And once you've got the hang of that, you can alternate by bringing this foot forward and Taking it back. Take this foot back. Bring this foot forward. You can alternate between the two. Take this foot forward. Take it back. And all the time keeping your twist in your torso and keeping your arms at the side. The next movement is the hip shimmy. We've got two shimmies. The one is the Egyptian shimmy and the other one is the Lebanese shimmy. We're going to begin with the Lebanese shimmy. You're going to have your knees bent, your feet are going to be facing forward, and the movement that you're looking for with your hips is an up and down movement. In the beginning, you're going to make the movement nice and slow, and it's probably going to be quite a big movement. Once you develop the muscle strength and the technique with this movement, you're going to be able to speed it up because the idea that you're looking for is a much quicker movement. You're wanting it to be very, very, very quick and obviously a lot smaller. You might struggle in the beginning to keep that, that movement going due to muscle strength, so then always revert back to the beginning and repeat it slowly. And then over time you're going to build up the muscle strength to be able to make it a lot quicker. The next shimmy is the Egyptian shimmy. The difference with the shimmy is that your knees are straight and that your weight is on the front of your feet. And this shimmy is also a shimmy that's going to be um, through your, through your whole body, it's not going to be only in your hips. You're going to take your knees and you're going to be knocking them back. And again, you're going to start off making it a very slow movement and over time, you're going to be able to speed it up. Make sure that your weight is on the front of your feet and make it as quick as you possibly can. One of the things with the shimmy is it's important that you get the technique right in the beginning because in the intermediate and the advanced levels what we do is we layer other movements on top of the shimmies. So eventually what you'll be doing is the shimmy together with another movement and it's important that you have the technique correct with the shimmies. The next area of belly dancing that we're going to explore is the upper body movements. One of the things with the belly dancing is the ability to isolate the top from the bottom, which is uh, something that will take time to practice and time to, to learn, and the exercises that we're going to do with you today are going to assist you with that. The first movement we're going to do is the chest lift. You're going to have your knees bent, your feet facing forward, your bum is tucked in, and from that position we're going to lift the chest. This area of your body upwards is going to move as a unit separate from the rest of your body. You're going to take your chest and you're going to lift it and lower it and lift it and lower it. Think of your diaphragm stretching open and closing, open and closing, open and closing. Then we're going to include the chest slide. You're going to take your feet and you're going to place them slightly apart. You're going to take your arms up to the side and you're going to take your shoulders over your hips. So take your shoulders 
lean them over your hips. Lean them over your hips. Notice that you're using your torso to make this movement. Keep your arms out at the side to make sure that you keep the movement straight. You want to avoid going down to the side. And if your arms are out straight, it's going to be easier for, for you to see when you're doing that. Now we're going to join up the four movements. You're going to place your feet back together. You're going to bend your knees, tuck your bum in. You're going to take your chest up and take it to the side. Take it in, take it to the side. Take it up, take it to the side. Drop it in, take it to the side. It's going to be four points of a circle that you're going to eventually join up. So if you had the circle here, you've got four points. One, two, three, four. And we're busy going one, two, three, four. And then eventually you're going to join up the four. So that you're going to be able to slide your chest in a circle. 